Hello, and welcome to the Quantizer. Today, we're gonna to be going over the Analog Discovery 2. This is quite possibly our favorite tool that we have in our toolbox. It is, it is jam-packed with functionality for both the analog and digital side of things. And so we're gonna give a lot of examples. And for the analog side, we're gonna show off the oscilloscope and the function generator it has in there. Also, the arbitrary waveform generator. And we're gonna do that by looking at this uh, low-pass filter as well as using the network analyzer to tune the low pass filter to a frequency response that we want and plot Bode plot so we can get some really, really good, um, really good understanding of how our circuit's working. Not only can you use it to do analog things, but you can also do digital things with it. So we, it has a built-in logic analyzer that we use all the times for things like this project which is a microcontroller, it's a fire beetle, an ESP32 microcontroller communicating with a distance sensor. And we're gonna show you how we can connect to this and debug the communication between those two devices. It's using I square ski in this case. And we'll be able to read it, not only read it, but we'll also be able to write to it. Because one of the things we use this tool for the most is to kind of get familiar with new peripherals that we really haven't used before. And we're gonna show it with that I squared C example. We're also gonna show a UART example using this ESP32, or excuse me, this is an ESP8266. And it uses UART, and so we're gonna both read and write UART with this analog discovery. And lastly, we're gonna give an example of SPY with this uh, 915 megahertz radio. And so we'll, we'll communicate with it so that we can show you a lot of really, really great functionality that this guy has. So stick around and let's check it out. Let's check out some of the analog features of the analog discovery too. So this circuit we have set up is a low pass filter. We have this potentiometer right here uh, connected to a, um, a capacitor and that, that, that together forms a low pass filter that we can adjust the characteristics of. And we have our function generator connected to the input of the circuit and our oscilloscope connected to the output of the circuit. So let's come over here to the software and let's see it, see it in action. So let's open up the scope and let's open up the wave gen, and let's get both those on the same screen. We can move this down some. There we go. All right. So let's turn on the function generator and let's start reading from the oscilloscope. Turn off channel two. And there you go. Uh, the This function generator is inputting into the circuit and we're seeing the output with our oscilloscope. And, this is a low pass filter, so it'll pass lower frequencies and attenuate higher ones. So as we increase the frequency, you'll start to see that attenuation happening. And we can adjust it by adjusting the potentiometer here. And you can see that we have changed the frequency response of this circuit. And whenever you have a circuit that you want to know the frequency response to, a really useful tool for that is the network analyzer. So let's go over here and let's, uh, let's look at that real quick. So if we come over here, let's uh, close that out and look at the network analyzer. All right. Get this thing on one page. Let's set it at one dB max and negative 10 dB on the bottom side. And it's gonna go from one kilohertz to one megahertz. And so let's, uh, let's run this guy. And there you go, there's the frequency response of our circuit. And we can come in here and we can get this tool to try and measure some stuff or to actually get it to ride the line right here. We can see where this is and find the 3 dB point of our, of, our, of our circuit right now. And then we can come in here and actually adjust the resistance value. And you can see it's changed the frequency characteristics of the circuit. Like let's say I wanted to get the 3 dB point somewhere, you know, over here. Let's adjust this over here. and. We tuned it and let's say that was what our target was, was that point. You could you could come in here and, and, and get it done so that we could have a 33 kilohertz 3 dB point. And that's what we got with this low pass filter. Let's look at the arbitrary waveform generator. So let's open up the waveform generator and let's create a new wave gen, empty. And there you go. We've got the normal waves here. We can do a triangle wave or a a ramp or uh, just get some noise on it. Just, just all kinds of interesting stuff. Just a normal sine wave. Uh, but what's more interesting is that we can come in here and create a new uh, waveform that we can, we can base off of something like a Gaussian and generate this thing. And we can 
use some math to actually have the, this deterministic cyclic waveform uh, that can be really precise as to what we need to do. Or we can come in here and just start drawing on the screen to get a really, a really odd looking waveform and, and send that in. And so that's pretty cool. Um, and my, one of my favorite things though, is not only can you do that, but you don't have to necessarily use a cyclic wave because we can import a wave file. Like this is my alma mater's fight song. Let's get it in here. And I can show you this, we can send out of the function generator by connecting it to this audio jack I have plugged into some speakers behind me. So let's connect the ground right there. And then let's start outputting the wave. And then let's take the probe and get it to hit one of the channels. There you go. Let's look at the other channel. All right, let's bridge the channels if we can. There you go, that's pretty cool. So I've used this circuit to directly inject all kinds of waves into things I'm working on. I've sent, you can even send in audio like that, like I've done before to, uh, to a circuit that I've been working on without having to have, you know, all of your other, other alternate uh, or your other components all set up to, you know, a microcontroller generating this stuff and all that, all that business. You could just input it with this device right here to validate a design. And it's one thing I really like about it. Here's a spy example. This is a RF board we got from SparkFun. It's a RFM69HCW. It's an easy to use uh, RF breakout board so you can communicate between two microcontrollers pretty easily over spy. And we're gonna show you how we would, uh, we would communicate with it using the Digital Analog Discovery 2. And this is something that we did. Uh, we don't want the scope, we want the protocol. But what we also want to get is the supplies because we want to power it 3.3 volts let's turn it on and then let's come over here to protocol and uh when we when we were first using this board this is exactly what we did we came in here and read the data sheet to figure out how to actually work with it and right now we're going to read register 10 so we should get back the version of 0x24 so let's go ahead and put in register 10 there and see if we can see if we can get that value back and we can there you go and so you just go through the data sheet and and uh, start to figure out exactly how to communicate with this thing and then go actually put it in code in one of your microcontrollers so that you can save a whole bunch of time. Here's a UART example. This is an ESP8266 and we can communicate with it via UART sending AT commands. Um, this is interesting because we get to view a couple things. We're gonna power it with power and ground here. We have our two UART lines and we also have an enable line right here so we can show you how we can do that in the software over here. So let's go to this static IO page right here. And you can see we've set DIO3 to be a switch where we can turn it on or off. And that's to make the enable line go high, as well as the power supplies, which we currently have off, and the protocol. So we're on UART, so let's let's turn it on, let's enable it, and let's start reading from the, the UART. Let's make sure this is on. There we go, Wi-Fi disconnected. Actually, I think I turned it off. There we go, I just enabled it again. Uh, there you go, and so we can see it, and we can actually communicate with it as well. So let's send in one of the AT commands. And it says error. <laughs> That's because we need to change our line feed to I think carriage return and line feed. Might be the other one, let's try it out. There we go, okay. So yeah, so there's different ways you can use UART, and you could just configure it up here to to send it in the way that your device needs it. And that's a good example of when you wanna communicate with something with your microcontroller to figure it out first before you start programming it. Let's look at an I squared C example. So this is a microcontroller. It's a ESP32, that's a fire beetle type. It's a really great battery powered uh, microcontroller, really, really low energy. That's why we like to use it for battery powered designs. And because it's battery powered, we needed to power it. So we're gonna do that with the Analog Discovery 2 here. So that's why we have these uh, power and ground lines and these two I squared C lines. And we're gonna monitor the communication between this microcontroller and that distance sensor uh, via I squared C. So let's come over here to the software. You can see we already have the protocol tool up, um, but we're gonna want to power it. So let's open the supply tool. 3.3 volts is what we want. Let's turn it on. Let's come over to the protocol tool, start receiving. And you can see that it's viewing the boot up process and it'll eventually start receiving distance measurements. And that's what this is right here. And I believe this one right here is the least significant bit of the distance reading in millimeters. So as I pick this up, you'll see that 
it'll it'll increase in value to you know that's a hex value so zero x two want two or two one and if i rotate it this way let's see if i can get you to see my hand getting it closer and then further away and you'll see that it's actually showing the the distance reading between those two and that's pretty cool but uh not only can you view the uh the data between two things you can actually send information as well so let's look at let's look at what what that what that chips address is it's 0x41 let's come over here and let's write to 0x41 and let's figure out what what register it is it is reading from let's go back over to protocol and it's reading from register 1d and it's reading 11 bytes i think so let's read it there you go we got a distance reading right there so there you have it. There's the analog discovery too. We showed you a lot of the functionality that we use all the time with the analog side. We showed you the oscilloscope and the function generator, uh, including the arbitrary waveform generation stuff and, and, uh, and then using uh, both those to do a network analyzer so we could get the frequency response of our circuits. It's a really handy way to, to analyze some analog um, circuits that you may have to deal with as well as the digital stuff, we, we show the logic analyzer and how we could use it to communicate via SPI, UART, or I squared C to a bunch of different devices so that we could inspect in circuit communication between microcontrollers and, and peripherals. Or when we got peripherals, we're just trying to figure out exactly what the data sheet's saying so we can communicate with it. And that's a way that we use it. We use it pretty often. So uh, if, if this is interesting to you and you want to get one there will be a, a link down in the description and if you buy through that link it really helps us out we would appreciate it um, also digilint has uh, discounts for students so we'll post a link to their uh, to their student program and uh, um, yeah if there's anything else you want to know about it be sure to comment and we'll uh, we'll cover it if there's more functionality of the analog discovery you want to see we'd like to show it to you um, also be sure to visit us at our website, www.thequantizer.com. We have a lot of stuff in there. We've got a, a bunch of different projects that we put up there. Or if there's any project up there that you don't see that you'd like to see, uh, put that down in the comments and we'd, we'd really enjoy hearing what you guys want to check out. So uh, be sure to like and subscribe and have a nice day.